to start out with a story. It happened in September 2014. So me and three others of the HPRP core team, we traveled to Stockholm. And we traveled to Stockholm to make a plan for HPRP. We, we were figuring out where, where are we going. And the first day, our goal was to try to phrase our vision, put it into words. We had in our head some kind of idea about what we wanted to do with H4P, but it was really hard to say it. Maybe we could say it in a book, but saying it in a few words, it was really hard. And we, we sat down in the hotel bar when we got to Stockholm, pen and paper, maybe we had a few drinks. And uh, we started to come up with ideas how to express this, where we are going. You're not going anywhere if you can't tell people where you're going. And you certainly can't make people follow you. So we had some ideas. I remember one of the ideas were, there were several good ones. So one that came up was, make interactive content flow freely. Make it flow freely. And we spent some time on that, we liked it. It said a lot. It said that interactive content isn't flowing freely today. There are things stopping it from moving from one site to another. It's, it's even things stopping it from moving within an organization. So people were creating things from scratch. It, it, it wasn't really working. It was a good, a good vision, but we were afraid that if we said make interactive content flow freely to someone on the street, it, you, know, you have to know a lot for it to make sense. Does it make sense to any of you? Make interactive content flow freely? Yes. There's some, some nodding here. Yeah. So for the, for the core it would probably be good. Another one it was a little bit the same. Democratize interactive content. Democratize it. So kind of say that we want, we, we, we want to enable everyone to express themselves with interactive content, freedom of speech. Everyone has to say, we like that too. But then, in a profound moment, it came from one of us, I don't remember who. Uh, we want to empower everyone to create, share, and reuse interactive content. And we've kept that vision ever since. It's a really, really good vision for HVP. So I'm actually going to spend one hour now showing you why this is a good vision and why this vision is the fundament for all the big decisions in HVP. So if we break it down and empower everyone to create, share, reuse interactive content, so it's empowered everyone. It's empowered to create, it's empowered to share, it's empowered to reuse. So what do we have to do to make this happen? And everyone is a very good word. It says a lot. It says that it has to be easy to use. It shouldn't be like the commercial tools where you, you need to go to school to use them. It has to be as easy as possible. We always have to strive to make it easy. It has to be accessible, of course. It should be accessible to everyone. If you are, I don't know if I use the political correct words, but if you're blind, if you're deaf, it, you should be able to use H5P. It should, should be a great experience to use H5P if you have a disability. Uh, H5P has to be free, of course. It's not only for the rich, it's for everyone. It has to be compatible, so no matter what other system you use, HVP has to work. And at least we have to make sure that if another system wants to use HVP, it's open source, it's licensed in a way that they can integrate it. I've seen many great integration examples here during, uh, during yesterday. It has to be known to everyone. Everyone can, you can't use something you don't know of. So we have to find a way to make everyone know about HVP. And it has to be customizable. It's impossible 
to make a tool that fits everyone. But if you can take the tool and you can add a little, remove a little, then you can use it. It has to be customizable. And when empowering to create, the most important thing is that you can create what you want to create. So we have to, we have, to have the right selection of things to create, and we, we, we call it content types, as you know. The right selection of content types and features. And the vision isn't really strong in, in telling us what content types and features we should have in detail. It says something, some of the things I already mentioned. But, uh, yeah, especially for, I'm the product owner, I need to have the largest heirs in the community. I need to know what's going on, I need to know what is the most wanted features. So uh, I'll be using my heirs throughout the conference and uh, tomorrow especially we're going to try to gather a lot of wishes. We have had some already. We'll gather more tomorrow to know where, where, where we should go with HVP, <coughs> what is the biggest wishes in, in the community. And we're also doing some new features on hvp.org to make sure that we get your wishes and, and know what are the most popular ones. Uh, empower to share. In order to share, we have to handle copyright really, really well. We are doing an okay job now on multimedia, images, audio, video. But uh, yeah, there's, there's, there will be more, more there this year. We need metadata. HVP almost don't have any metadata right now. It's by design, but uh, when the hub comes up, we need metadata so that people can find things. If, if you want to, to share things, obviously, you have to make, make it easy for people to find the things that you share. And you need a place to share it. So there's where the HVP hub comes in. It's always been planned. We, we need a hub. We need to make it easy for all users of A4P to just with one click share their content in a hub, make it available for everyone using H4P. Um, and reuse, it's much of the same, but if you want reuse in the world of interactive content, you can't expect people to reuse exactly as is. It, it doesn't happen. So you have to uh, make it really, really easy to change. You want to add a question, you want to remove one, you want to add an option, maybe you want to translate, maybe you want to make it a little bit more difficult, a little bit easier. This, this has to be easy, then we can really reuse. How do we make it easy to use? I want to thank all of you here who are in the beta tester group and have been working, especially with Yelena, beta testing new features for HVP. So all our new features, they are um, first made available for our beta testers. And they do a screen sharing session with Yelena and they tell us is this intuitive or not. They try to explain what they think when they use it and we adjust it a bit. So we try to really make it as easy to use as possible and I urge all the others here who also create HVP content types to try to do the same. Grab a hold of a colleague, uh, do whatever you can to make someone who has never seen the things you do, uh, test it and give you feedback, see if they can use it. We've also had several usability experts go through H4P, uh, made a list, prioritized list of things that needs to be improved in order to make it easier to use. Uh, we haven't fixed all of them, the, the list is quite long, but we are working from the top of the list. I'm going to show you some of the changes later on. Uh, we're going to gather statistics. Now, this is a little bit hard. I know when in some countries they are almost uh, terrified when we gather statistics. But uh, at, at least uh, on sites we control, like hvp.org, there will be another as well, we can gather statistics. We can see that, okay, drag and drop for instance, a lot of the people who start creating a drag and drop, they don't finish it. Or it never gets used. So there's something wrong with drag and drop. And then we can go into the details, what did they click, what did they do. It's anonymized, but it gives us an idea about what features was it that they misunderstood or didn't find. That's, that's important. 
it's very important for us to have great, amazing designers who can both create something that is visually appealing and that is uh, easy to use, really easy to use. And finally, it's about culture. I think one of the, one of the biggest companies in the world who started to take uh, user experience seriously was Apple. So Apple is not a, a role model for us in many aspects, but in this aspect, user experience, take it seriously. And it, it means that there's no fight between developers and designers. We all work together to create a really great user experience, and often the developers as well come with really great improvements, making it easier and uh, more a bigger pleasure to use FYP. We value it very, very highly, and I hope I hope, hope we can continue to do that, that everyone in the community values user experience highly. If you want a lot of features, it kind of battles a little bit with user experience, but there are ways to do it, and we have to really fight to make it intuitive. A lot of open source projects have fallen to pieces because they get pull requests, they add any feature that comes in, and you know, three checkboxes turns into 20, and it's just a jungle, nobody can use it. So, so we have to be really smart and think a lot about it. <laughs> HPP has to be free. So what we have now is mostly MIT licensed. It's one of the most open licenses there is. You can do almost anything, you can use it commercially, you can use it with uh, open source license. The most common open source license is perhaps GPL, it's, com it's compatible with, with almost anything. And for content, free content, uh, we, we have embraced Creative Commons. Uh, the, it, the, it, there really isn't any good alternatives, as far as I know. So we, we have these free open licensing schemes. As I said, I, I think the most, the easiest uh, improvement we can do to make sure that we are adding the right features is in the forum. Because right now, people are really good at searching and checking, do we already have a report of the bug or the feature that, we, that they want. Uh, we don't have a lot of duplicates, and, and I'm pretty sure it means that people are searching first and then creating. The problem is that we don't know that you're searching. We are at least not good at checking that log. So all the features seem to have the same level of importance. So when someone out there creates something, we go and check. You know, it's, everyone only has one vote. Uh, often we understand that this one is important, but sometimes because we, we get like, we spend hours every day going through the forum. Sometimes we are a bit too quick and it seems like just a minor thing that isn't that important and it's super important. So there will be voting soon so that everyone who has the same problem can vote. And it's super important that you do. And it's super important that you keep uh, creating issues about big things, small things, uh, everything. And, and try to indicate to us that this, this really stops me from, from using HPP if it is important. Uh, and and uh, yeah, we're going to work tomorrow to uh, get a lot of feature requests and prioritize them, figure out what are the most important thing we can do. If, if there is, you, you, could, you should think about it for tomorrow. If there was one or two things you could change in HPP, what would they be? dream about it tonight and have it ready tomorrow. <laughs> um, copyright, how will we do it? In every element in H5P, texts, multiple choice, fill in the blanks, not only the media elements, it, it will have copyright. But don't worry, it won't be uh, like the, the forum gets even taller. Yelena will find a smart way so that only those who want to add copyright, those who know that they will be sharing, can add copyright and we, we uh, disturb others as little as possible. You will see one extra small button, uh, button probably, but that's it. 
so, so we won't disturb people who doesn't want to share. Um, <coughs> and, and, and yeah, if you are sharing something, if you have a stock photo image in your resource and you still want to share it, this is where it's, it's super important to have the integrated payment solution. Because if, if we don't have it, you, your resource is broken. You can't share it anymore. There is one commercial item there and, and uh, your, your thing can't be shared. But when we have integrated payment solution, it means that everyone else who wants to use your resource, they can pick, do I want to use the commercial image? Okay, I pay. Uh, if I don't want to use it, okay, remove the commercial stuff. The author said that this is open except for the commercial stuff. So, so remove the commercial stuff and, and reuse it. Uh, so, so it should be good for for everyone, as in the vision. <coughs> Metadata. And feel free to comment or ask questions or anything. I, I think people might have an opinion here. What we think are the important metadata. We don't want to have too much. It's, it's really a hassle to, to add metadata. It's not fun. I, I know we're one of HRP's users. They went all in and they, they had a slow server too, so uploading an image to their server frequently took 15 minutes. You had the image, but there was so much stuff you had to fill in, uh, in several languages, that it took 15 minutes to add an image. And, and then it, it's not for everyone anymore. So, so what we want to have is uh, a title, uh, and I think that will be required. At least for questions, because we need the title in XAPI as well. But that's the only thing. And then you can add discipline. So math, uh, uh, it, it can be anything, oil, industry. I'm not sure exactly what kind of words uh, will be used there. But discipline, level, and the level also a little bit unclear. Will we use age? Will we use kind of uh, kindergarten, middle school? Uh, we will see. I think we have decided it, but I don't remember what the decision was, and uh, it can be changed. Yes? Uh, and the hub. I'm going to show you some screenshots of the content hub later today. It will look a lot the same as the content type hub. So you, you will have icons, you will have titles, you can go in, you can read more about it, you can see reviews about each content item in the content hub. You can uh, also see, see screenshots and try it out. And, and of course, yeah, we, we will continue to improve the search. So free, free, free text search will probably be the most frequent way people try to find things and <coughs> we're going to make it as good as we can. Easily change. It has to be as easy as possible. Right now, if, if we just uh, used HPP as is, some things would be easy to change, some things not. Uh, the column, for instance, if you have a big column and there are some, you, you take something from the hub, you want to change something. You have to go into the jungle of fields in the column and find the right one and change it. It's a little bit too hard. It's not appealing. So I'm going to show you uh, later today how we're going to make that much. If you find something that's almost perfect but want a few changes, we're going to make it very, 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 very easy to make that. Known to everyone. Uh, there are no marketing people in the core team. Uh, there are no marketing responsible in, in the community, but still we have people here in the conference from the US, Japan, Lebanon, uh, a lot of countries. I think we were 18 countries, if I remember correctly, in the conference. HRP is quite big in Australia. I've never been there. Uh, it's, we have a sponsor in Brazil, so it's, it's all over the world. And it's, it's not because of marketing, it's because uh, everyone in the community like what we do, what the community do, and they're happy to spread the word and they're doing a really, really good job of 
spreading the word. So it's, it's been uh, really cool to see how many people travel around. There was one guy from Australia, he has been to Asia on conferences uh, talking about HKP, he's called Mike. He has been in many places in Australia and he's been to uh, Las Vegas talking about HKP. So that's, that's really awesome. And, and many times we don't know about it. We just see it on Twitter. Oh, Mike was there too, talking about HRP. <laughs> Sometimes I'm jealous because I wanted to go to Vegas. But <laughs> that's how it is. Uh, so so it's, it's really great to see, see what the community does in terms of spreading the word. It's, it's amazing. Uh, I think we are doing an awesome job. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I think that those who are more core team are really eager. We, we can also do a lot to facilitate help. We, we are not doing much today. We have uh, a course presentation people can use, but that's pretty much it. So we'll, we'll try to make it a little bit easier for people who, who want to present h for p If they need resources or anything, it should be a place to go and, and grab those resources. And, and we also hope that... I know that people don't use h for p because of the vision. Uh, but I think it's a little bit like on uh, Norwegian, when you fly in Norwegian. You, you see that you are, you are supporting UNICEF children. It's a good feeling. You know that it, it, it's, it's a bigger story behind it. So maybe they go to reasons, interactive video or course presentation or whatever. But in the end, I think the vision will be the most important thing. Uh, knowing where we are going. So I, I think it's important when we talk about HVP to others, at least try to explain them what the vision is. Uh, one thing because it kind of helps attract people, and another thing is it's very good if everyone knows where we are going, so that we can pull in the same, same direction. Okay, <clears throat> and getting back to uh, community. Uh, it, it was interesting to start HVP in the beginning. I know we, we had uh, Google Analytics up and running in the office and we were celebrating when there was one person in uh, h4p.org that was not, the dot wasn't in Trump, so it was <laughs> somewhere else. And, uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of people were laughing at us, do you really think anyone else will use this? <laughs> yes, we do. Uh,